I'll tell you the things that I drew out of the hat after I finish telling the story. Long ago, in the lands of Illyria, deep in the foothills of the Iron Fang Ridge, there stood a castle long abandoned and decrepit. Rumors had abounded for years that deep within those halls there awaited a great treasure for those brave enough to venture within its walls. But many a noble and a noble son had gone off towards the Iron Fang Ridge seeking that fortune, and none had ever returned. In time, even the Crown Prince Strahl, brave and handsome, ventured off to see what might be within that castle of the Iron Fang Ridge. He wondered what had become of the nobles that had gone off questing for gold. Well, he himself, three months later, had not returned. The king was devastated, thinking that his son was lost forever. But he had another son. Strahl's younger brother, Julian, was maybe not quite as tall, but was still a noble soul, brave at heart, and Julian was not interested in seeking gold or solving a mystery. Julian resolved to find his brother and bring him back home. Well, at the hearing of the news that his younger son was also going out, the king fell into a despondent state. He was confined to his bed. He, he didn't even dare to face the world. Meanwhile, Julian resolved to figure out the best way to approach the situation. He thought to himself, all the ones missing were nobility. So I will disguise myself. He shed his noble robes, and he donned the sackcloth of a simple peasant. As his weapon, he took up a spear and had it blessed by the high priest. And there he set off for the distant ruined castle looking for his departed brother. As he approached the foothills, he could make out a forest of twisted, blackened trees. This was the known haunt of the Black Ones. Hideous, twisted ogres that were known to often venture into the villages. For the longest time, people had thought that the Black Ones would constantly fight amongst each other, but more recently, they seemed to be going out and working together rather than the constant infighting that they expected. Something was nice. Something perhaps that looked within the keep that they are kind of future. Julian did not fear the black ones. His heart was stalled and his spear arm strong. He strode straight into those blackened woods. And in due time, the black ones did cross his path. But he did not stray. He did not falter. He braced his spear and struck down the first black ones that dared to approach him with ease. More continued to approach him, but he laid them low as well. And in no time at all, so it seemed, he had cleared the forest, and there before him was the castle. He took a deep breath and he entered into the gate. And as he passed through the gatehouse, his eyes widened in wonder, for what he beheld was a magnificently appointed great hall with tapestries of priceless value adorning the walls, great carpets, tables heaped with food, and on all sides, dozens of men, the nobles, the nobles' sons, the nobles' brothers, and they were all nearly naked, with chains around their necks, bearing cups and bowls in the manner of servants. Julia looked to the far end of the hall, and there, sitting in a great throne, the most beautiful woman that he had ever seen. Hair, as if it were made of pure spun gold, a slim figure, and a mouth that was set in a cruel sneer. And right next to her, kneeling at her side, holding up a tray of sweet dried fruits was his brother, Crown Prince Strong. His eyes seemed dead.
Julian strode forth and demanded to know what this place was and who she was. She introduced herself, saying, I am Belladonna. I was one time the princess of this castle, but my father had insisted that I enter into a loveless political marriage. I would not have it. I escaped that bond, that prison, by delving into the dark arts. And I resolved that I would be revenged upon all of mankind. And I created this. She held up her hand. On her hand sparkled a golden ring. She said, within this ring, is the power to ensnare men's hearts and minds. It is the ring of lust. All I have to do is raise my finger and I can cast a ring about them that will ensnare them to my bidding for all time. It is how I have trained the black ones just beyond these castle walls to do my bidding. They have helped lure some of the nobility in by spreading tales. They have kept the piddling peasants such as yourself, for the most part, away. But of course, now that you are here, I, I can see that I'm going to either have to kill you or possibly ensnare you myself. But I don't see why I should keep you around here just a filthy peasant. Well, Julian had had enough of this. He said right then and there, I am not going to stand by and let you perpetrate this evil any longer. I will free these men from your bidding. Belladonna did not think him capable of anything, so she rather carelessly raised her hand. A hoop of gold appeared in it, and across one rim, one side of the rim to the other side, faint lines like those of a spider's web. And she tossed it casually in his direction, expecting it to wrap around him and ensnare him to do her bidding for all time. But no, Julian spun to one side and let it casually fall, to, fall right next to him. Belladonna thought to herself, wait a moment. I was too quick and too nimble. A simple peasant couldn't learn anything like that. I'd best be a little more vicious with him. And she tossed another ring. Again, he darted to one side. And she tossed another. And another. Again and again, she tried to ensnare him until finally one ring descended so fast and so directly over him he had no time to dodge. But instead, he lifted forth his blessed spear, thrust it into the spider web between the edges of the ring, and it burst into millions of golden, sparkling slivers. The ring of lust had been defeated was purified, and its energy spread over the entire room. And in an instant, the dull eyes of the enslaved nobles awakened. And even more than that, the slivers fell directly over their former master's eyes. And all of a sudden, Belladonna found herself ensnared by her own sorcery. And so, the spell of the Ring of Lust was defeated. The nobles recovered their senses and were able to return to their homes at long last. The Crown Prince Straw returned to his father, the King, who was overjoyed. The spell over the Black Ones broken, and once again they began infighting amongst each other, leaving all of the, the villages and the peasants alone. And as for Julian, he had turned the power of lust back on itself, and he now became the new lord of the Iron Fang Bridge.